Hello, my name is Julie Novak, and I'm thrilled today to be presenting musical strategies for students with visual impairment and varying exceptionalities. In my presentation today, I will be covering the following topics. First, the nature of music. Second, music and concept development. Third, using music to set up your learning environment for the special learner. And finally, music and the expanded core curriculum. Before I get started, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. I taught for 10 years at the Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind. I was the music educator. I taught preschool through high school programs at the School for the Blind. And in this slide, there's a picture of me with my high school ensemble, the Bad News Bulldog Band. It was during my time at CSCB that I studied music therapy and completed graduate work where I focused on using music to teach non-musical skills. It is my hope and my intention today to inspire creative ideas for you to incorporate music in your home and classroom to help facilitate learning. Music impacts our development throughout our whole entire life, from birth until death. Researchers have found that babies begin to respond to music in the womb, and soon after they come out of the womb, babies have musical preferences. Music is now used in NICUs and in hospitals to help expedite the hospital, hospital stay of premature infants. Not only does music have healing powers, the positive impact of music on creativity, cognition, and learning are evident. A neuroscientist, Oliver Sacks, states in his book, Musicophilia, regular exposure to music and especially active participation in music may stimulate development of many different areas of the brain. Areas which have to work together to listen or to perform music. For the vast majority of students, music can be every bit as important educationally as reading or writing. So music is often used as a vehicle to teach non-musical skills. Research has indicated that music can be used to increase communication sustain attention, reinforce positive behaviors, reduce stress, enhance memory, and increase communication. During my time as the music teacher at the, the Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind, a lot of people would ask me, are students with visual impairment more impacted by music than the sighted population? Or in other words, are the students at the School for the Blind more talented? Do they love music more because they are blind or visually impaired? In my experiences, the range of talents correlates strongly with the sighted population. However, I have read studies that link certain vision diagnoses to higher musical abilities. Studies show that if, you have, if there is early um, vision loss, blindness at an early age, the brain may compensate for the lack of visual input in early life by changing its wiring for sound. In the two studies that I found, they really focus on, the two, on two vision diagnoses, one being retinopathy of prematurity, and the second vision diagnosis is septo-optic dysplasia. In both studies, they found that there were higher musical abilities. Of course, it's important to note that in those studies, the sample size is very small. Like most studies with blindness, it's a low incident disability, so it's important to keep that in mind. Music and concept development. Most of us gain information about the world through our eyes. While the other senses provide input, none of them provide similar information compared to what we receive with our vision. A child with a visual impairment perceives information based upon fragmented information. 
in order for the student to build and understand accurate concepts, an educator or parent needs to expose the student to many opportunities of diverse and extensive hands-on opportunities. Concepts introduced should be attached to language. They should be reinforcing, repetitious. The child should be able to generalize the concept. And finally, the concept should be introduced with tactual input. Music is a wonderful tool to reinforce concept development. First of all, music is naturally tied to language. Musical lyrics can be used as an aid to teach a concept. Secondly, music is reinforcing and therefore begs to be repeated by children. How many times as adults have we been stuck in some kind of childhood musical game? For example, Ring Around a Rosie, where we're all, all holding hands with our children and falling down, a child can get lost in this game and repeat it 20 times without being bored. And in older populations, a high school student can listen to the same rap song 50 times with their brain still not getting enough. Music encourages more exposure, more, and it could be used for more exposure to concepts. Accurate concept development, um, is, it's important to have, in order to have accurate concept development, a child must be able to generalize a concept learned. For example, in a musical setting, when a child is exposed to, for example, a hand drum, it is important that teachers and parents make sure that the child is exposed to all sorts of drums. There are timpani drums, there are drums that you can play with your feet called the kick drum, there's drum sets. It's important that the child is exposed to the entire concept of a drum so they don't assume that a drum means only this that they're holding in their hand. Another musical concept that needs to be, um, that has multiple meanings and, and needs to be generalized is the concept of high. When you're introducing high for singing, it means di a different thing than, of course, high with, um, with sp a spatial concept. Students can be shown melodic contour of what it means for a melody to go high. Sometimes people refer to high as turning up the volume. Can you please turn up the volume higher? So it's important to teach these multiple meanings with musical concepts. Finally, tactual input. Music is often paired with tactual objects such as songbooks, instruments, and movements like finger plays. There are a lot of songs that um, incorporate finger plays. It is important when you are doing finger plays with your, with your students that you make sure that the song is demonstrated hand under hand. This allows the child to see the teacher's hand and understand the movement. And of course, that is called the hand under hand technique. All of these are ways that music can be used to help with concept development. On a side note, I just wanted to encourage you, you do, you do not have to be a musician or an American Idol to utilize music in your home or classroom. A lot of people who don't sing with their children sometimes have had a bad experience with, where an adult told them that they're not good or that their voice they can't carry a tune. And I just want to make sure that you understand that children really don't care about pitch quality and rhythm. They care about connection and fun. So it's important for you to remember that your voice is probably the most important voice that they'll ever hear singing with them. So I encourage you not to focus on the insecurities or past history of negative musical experience, but to focus on connection and fun with your child. And that happens through singing and movement and dancing. Next, I'm going to talk about how to use music to set up your environment, specifically using music as a cue for learning or transition and using music as a memory cue for objects or tasks in the environment. Music can be found at a football game as a cue to excite us and, and get us rallied up to support a team. 
In the opposite extreme, music can be used at a yoga class to be a cue for relaxation. Educators can use music as a, as a tool to help students who have issues regulating their mood or emotion. Music therapists like to use a tool or a technique called the ISO principle. A lot of times it's used in clinical settings where a patient is agitated or anxious. A music therapist will play a song to match where they are with their mood. So if the patient is really agitated, the music therapist will play on the guitar something that really matches, the, ry the rhythm is, is very fast, the, maybe the, temp the volume is very loud to match where the patient is. And then using music as a tool for entrainment, the music therapist slowly brings the patient down with the music. So by the time that the music therapist dis is slowly strumming or finger picking, the patient's mood has, is also matching the music. Educators can use the ISO principle in education, or parents can use it in a home setting or an educational setting. Let me give you an example. If a student is having a hard time focusing, they um, come to the learning environment, their eyes are darting, their focus is um, not with the teacher or with the parents, they are having a hard time regulating themselves. I would pick a song, for example, if they are in kindergarten. I like to use a song that goes like this. Of course, preference is important. So you pick songs that students like. And um, one of them that I use is Gonna shake, shake, shake my sillies out, shake, shake, shake my sillies out, shake, shake, shake my sillies out, and wiggle and waggle all day. So I choose a song to kind of match where they are, which is in a, a real fast paced movement place. Then I slow down the tempo and the rhythm of the song, and I go to the next part. Gonna clap, clap, clap my crazies out, clap, clap, clap my crazies out, clap, clap, clap my crazies out, and wiggle and waggle away. As I go through the song, I gradually slow the song down to the final stage. Gonna stretch, stretch, stretch my sillies out, stretch, stretch, stretch my sillies out. So this is an example of the ISO principle using music to bring students from where their mood is to a place where they need to be for that, that situation, which is learning. Music can be a powerful cue in the educational environment for learning and transitions. Oftentimes, transitions can be difficult for any young student, but especially for students with special needs. If this is the case, music should be used as a cue to start and end activities. For example, hello songs are an important tool to cue a student that a new activity is about to start, to get their bodies and their minds ready for this new activities. Closing songs or goodbye songs are also an important critical tool in getting a student ready and prepared to close out an activity. I like to use a song in my classroom environment. It's called um, the farmer in the dell. What I do, it's a piggyback tune. So I take a famous melody and I make up my own lyrics to fit my environment or what I need for that class. For example, if I need students to move somewhere else in the classroom space, I'll use it like this. Turn your chairs around, turn your chairs around. Hi ho and aereo, turn your chairs around. Sometimes I'll go through it twice or three times. This gives the student time and preparation to move themselves. It's not so abrupt. They know they have from the beginning to the end of the song. And it's a powerful tool for students with special needs. I would like to give you an, another specific example that I use in my classroom. I once had a student who, a high school student, who was on the autistic spectrum and he was, he's blind visually impaired. He had a very difficult time transitioning from lunch to his next academic activity. He and I created the song together to help him 
figure out how to regulate his mood and um, focus better for the next activity. I'd like to share it with you. If I'm having a bad day, I take a deep breath, take a deep breath. If things are not going my way, I take a deep breath, take a deep breath, and maybe things will start going. So as you can see, in the song, we embedded a breathing technique for him, and this would de-escalate him from a very agitated mood to a calm mood. By the end of the song, he would say, Ms. Novak, I'd like to apologize to the following people. As, as I transitioned, I was a little bit rude to. So it would kind of make him realize that his behavior was irrational in the transition. Using music as a memory cue for objects or tasks in the environment. It is no secret that music is a powerful mnemonic device. Almost all of us learn the ABCs through music. Songs are used in commercials in hopes that we remember the jingle and the product that is connected to that jingle. Yet, music is often underutilized in classroom and home environments to embed information. I would like to give you an example of how I use music to teach and embed information for a student with special needs. At the School for the Blind, I had a student with traumatic brain injury. He had a difficult time mem memorizing details. He, in his orientation and mobility lessons, he had to remember two questions to ask the bus driver. Is this bus number seven? And will you tell me when we're downtown? These are two questions that were very challenging him to him. He would freeze when he got to the bus and not remember or recall this information. Using music, we were able to teach this information to him, and he was able to be independent in, recall, in recalling this information. When Mike is on the bus, he must not make a fuss. He must remember two important questions. He looks at the driver and says, Is this bus number seven? Will you tell me when we're downtown? Is this bus number seven? Will you tell me when we're downtown? So within a, within a week, he learned the song, and eventually we had to fade the music away because, of course, it would be inappropriate for him to get on the bus and sing, is this bus number seven? So we had to teach him what is it now without the music, and he would say, is this bus number seven? So the information was accurately recalled in a socially appropriate way. I wanted to share with you some fabulous resources that uses music in this way, uses music to embed important information for children. These resources I used often in my classroom, and they were highly loved and respected and reinforcing to my students. The first one was www.tunedintolearning.com. My favorite thing about this website are the songs they do a wonderful job with instrumentation. The, the musical quality is very high. They teach a lot of non-musical concepts through music. They have lots of samples on the website for you to check out before you buy their CDs. Another powerful resource is YouTube.com. If you type in rap tracks in the search engine, tons and tons of different instrumental background for raps come up. This would be a nice, this is a nice resource if you have a student that needs to memorize certain information and loves rap music, they can use this back, these background tracks and create a rap that is connected to the concept that you're trying to teach them. 
Also on YouTube, there are many teachers who've created songs. One of my favorite teachers is Mr. Carr. He is a science teacher and has done an amazing job composing, or actually he, what we call piggyback songs, is he takes pop music and teaches science concepts through the pop music. So Mr. Parr. And finally, my favorite resource, www.vocabulary.com, is a wonderful index of raps that um, connect to music, English, and science concepts. The raps are so high quality and very highly reinforcing to the students. A lot of my students actually learn their multiplication tables through this website. So please check all of these resources out. In addition to all core curricular areas included in general education, students with visual impairment need to receive instruction in very specific skills laid out in the expanded core curriculum. For the sake of time, I'm gonna focus on three components of the expanded core curriculum, recreation and leisure skills, orientation and mobility, and social skills. First, I want to discuss music as a recreation and leisure skill. If music is highly reinforcing for a student, and, or if the student is talented or gifted in this area, a parent or teacher needs to think, how can we make the student more independent in his or her hobby? For example, if they participate in a high school band, what can we do to support them in continuing this pursuit after high school rather than putting the flute or instrument in the closet? How can we encourage them to keep this hobby up in their next environment? I have one student who played piano all through high school and now in his adult, in his adult stage of life, he plays for nursing homes around his community and that's a way that he stays connected with his skill in the community. If a student enjoys listening to music, how can we teach them to be independent on, on iTunes or how they go about buying their music? How can we teach them to find local concerts in their community and find transportation to the events? A weekly event that would happen in my class was to go to a website in my area called coloradosprings.com. We as a class would review all of the local events and discuss which would be of interest to the students. We would look at the cost of the event. We'd look how does, how does the bus take you to that event? Who would you go with? What are some of the social rules of going to an opera versus going to a rock concert? So I encourage you to figure out a website that you have in your community and to review with your child or students so they know all of the wonderful recreational opportunities that music has to offer. Next, I'd like to talk about orientation and mobility skills. I had a very special relationship with the orientation and mobility specialist at CSDB because so many of our concepts go hand in hand. A lot of times music can be used to teach pre-cane pre skills. For example, auditory skills, sound localization, spatial and directional concepts fine motor skills and gross motor skills. Music can be used to teach all of these concepts. I'd like to share with you a specific song we used to use to teach high and low concepts. I clap my hands up high, I clap my hands down low. I clap them way up in the air, I clap them down below. I clap them to the left, I clap them to the right. I clap them all around, and I clap with all my might. So this song is an example of music that teaches non-musical spatial concepts. For example, high, low, left and right, and all around. There are many songs that, that do this, and so that's why a lot of times it would go hand in hand with teaching orientation and mobility skills. Finally, social skills. Music is a wonderful way to reinforce social skills. In choral performance, 
musicals, band performances, students are required to pay attention to social components such as appearance, posture, eye contact, behavior, and facial expressions. Of course, they must be intentionally taught because the students cannot pick up vicariously cues from their environment due to the vision loss. Music also intrinsically teaches us how to pay attention. When you're taking part in an ensemble or you're singing a solo, you have to pay attention to the conductor or to have whoever's accompanying you. You have to pay attention to how the other musicians relate to you in a song. I used music to teach a, um, a lesson on listening skills. I'm about to show you an example of a lesson that I taught with the objective of teaching students to stay on topic in a conversation. The example you're about to see is a class made up of students who are visually impaired with varying exceptionalities. And you're about to see how to use music to teach a social skill such as staying on topic. Off Topic, On Topic, Creative Developer, Julie Novak, CTVI, Colorado School for the Deaf and Blind. Captioning services provided by Caption Perfect. Description services provided by Bridge Multimedia. A title, CSDB Social Skills Lesson. Okay, class, last time we talked about... One student touches another. Off topic and on topic conversations, right? So, I have a, I have, I'm going to sing you a song, and I would like you to tell me what the topic of the song is. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah. The teacher plays guitar for five students. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. One guy raises his hand. Give me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I never get back. What's the topic of that song, Martin? A baseball game. Yes, all of the lyrics relate to a baseball game. You're exactly right. Here is another one. Tell me what you think the topic of the song is. Two guys nod along together. A girl taps her thighs in rhythm. Another guy raises his hands. What's the, what's the topic of that song, Nathan? Martin's hand is up too. What, yeah, what's it about? Home. It's about a song about home, and this is, this person's home happens to be Colorado. Yep, good job. Conversations are like songs in the fact that you always kind of want them to, to relate to a topic. You don't, when you're in a conversation with someone, you don't want to go completely off topic. I'm going to actually sing a song for you right now, and one of the lyrics are going to, is going to be completely off topic. And you have to guess which lyric is off topic. Are you ready? Go. Yeah. Martin. Bring it. Sleep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Nathan rocks and claps. <laughs> Martin and the girl beside him both raise their hands. Which comment was off topic? Laura? The what's for lunch comment. Yes, it had nothing to do with the song. <laughs> so, we are going to do a practice. We're going to play a game. I'm going, to, I'm going to pick a subject. You and your friend are going to have a back and forth conversation, taking turns, but you need to stay on topic, okay? Raise your hand if you'd like to participate or to be a volunteer for this conversation. Martin raises his hand. A new title, Evaluation. Okay, raise your hand if you'd like to be Martin's conversation partner. Laura. Okay, Laura. So Laura, sitting up straight, and looking towards each other. Now, Martin and Laura, your topic is going to be music. You guys have to talk about music for 20 seconds, okay? Going back and forth on the topic of music. Martin, you're going to start the conversation. Ready? Go. Well, Laura, what is your, uh, what's your favorite type of music? My favorite type of music is Whitney Houston and Big Sea Tricks. And some of Adele. Like someone like you, but I don't like rolling in the deep or set fire to the rain. You let the conversation go back to Martin, Laura. Ask him a question. What is your favorite food? 
So that's on topic. Right, right. So Laura, we wanted to stay on music for 20 seconds, okay? Oops. So can you ask him a question about music? Um, what do you like about music? Later. Okay, let's go ahead and stop. Give them a hand. Give them a hand. The described and captioned media program provides services designed to benefit students who are blind, visually impaired, deaf, hard of hearing, and deafblind. These services include a library of free loan described and captioned educational media, a clearinghouse of information related to educational media access, a gateway to internet resources related to accessibility. There are no... It has been an honor to present for you today. If you have any questions or comments, you can contact me at Julie Novak underscore 77 at yahoo.com. Thank you very much.